to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Welcome God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman to bless our life. Go ahead and celebrate the grace of God upon this life. Go ahead. Go ahead. Celebrate the grace of God upon his life. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. Let me start by communicating my honor and greetings to His Excellency, the Governor, and Her Excellency. Thank you so much. And um, all protocols duly observed. I bless the Lord for this privilege and I trust that the moments that we have to share would be most profitable in Jesus name Amen. shall we pray father thank you thank you for your grace the Bible declares that the entrance of your word give it light and even understanding to the simple we have come to learn we have come to increase in knowledge and I pray that you will grant us access to the truths of the kingdom and let our lives show in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that whilst you do this, you will continually lift the state. That Aquaibom will become a sign and a wonder in this nation and even to the nations of the earth. That you are a people that have been marvelously helped of God. In Jesus' name, I pray. I must take a minute or two to sincerely commend this entire prayer project i was very humbled when i got to find out that this is a sacrifice that without fail happens in this state it is it is not something to just sweep under the carpet the bible is very intentional about what happens to a people and leaders who are very vocal about god in fact the bible says this about uzziah he said that for as long as he sought the lord the Lord made him to prosper. Hallelujah. And so I truly want to commend His Excellency for the courage. I believe it takes a lot of that to see to it that this project continues to happen. And so the Lord honor you and also appreciate all who have stood by Him on this wise. In the name of Jesus. I'm teaching very briefly on the subject of prevailing prayer. Um, I believe that prayer has to be taught for believers to effectively pray we are a people of prayer we are a nation of prayer africa is a continent of prayer but i submit to you that with reference to the intelligence that scripture provides most people have not been able to contend for the kind of prayer that produces results we see this in the life of the disciples they were first disciples of john before a number of them became the disciples of Jesus and they noticed that there was a way and a manner that Jesus prayed that made him to have results and so in their frustration they opened up to him and they said teach us to pray you find that in Luke chapter 11 from verse 1 teach us to pray this was not an issue of prayerlessness this was an issue of unprofitable resultless prayer they were not prayerless people they noticed that there was a way they approached prayer that didn't produce results and so they beckoned on jesus and said teach us to pray like john also taught his disciples hallelujah so prayer can be taught uh, the consolation for the believer in prayer is that you are confident that in prayer you will receive and not just that you receive but it will be made manifest it is my considered opinion that no believer will truly become and remain prayerless 
if you know how to get results in prayer because nobody leaves what works is that true the prayerlessness of many believers is an attestation to the frustration that many have received in an attempt to communicate with this god who has um communicated his love and his desire to reach down to people we pray using all kinds of formulas and sadly for many believers it's become a ritual that does not have any potency and any results so my assignment within the moments that we have is for us to look deeper from god's word to help construct our understanding about the kind of prayer that works are we together for reference let's look at james chapter 5 i'll begin my reading from verse 13 and then we'll end at 18. james chapter 5. he said is any among you afflicted let him pray so up front the bible the scriptural recommendation for affliction is prayer that every time you find out that things are going in your life as it shouldn't be the biblical recommendation to manage that situation is to pray is any one of you afflicted the bible says let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms to 18 now he said is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord then it says the prayer of faith shall save the sick so prayer can save you see the character of prayer demonstrated here prayer is not an empty spiritual exercise it sustains the power to save in this case the sick but it is not only the sick that prayer saves prayer has the character of salvation are we together it says and if he had committed any sins they shall be forgiven him i plead that we read verse 16 together if you can see it ready it says confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed now my point of emphasis one to read the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much let's just pause here for a moment he's giving us a very interesting information number one that whoever prays this prayer has to be a righteous man and then it says the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much in terms of its delivery, in terms of the result that it produces. Now, you see, the character of scripture is that every time God presents a thought, he does not leave you in confusion as to the dynamics of the idea he's presenting. Usually, he will look for an individual in scripture who personifies his idea and force you to understudy that individual to become the reference for understanding that thought are we together so if he's teaching you on prayer just leaving you in the dark as to this might not bring thorough understanding the next verse now is god buttressing on the point and he uses an individual to personify his idea in this case elijah that means Elijah is the personification of all that has been said now. If you study Elijah and the character of his approach to prayer, you would learn something from it that will make your prayer effectual. Is God helping us already? He says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. So he already takes away any superstition around Elijah. He's telling you that Elijah was framed with the, with the limitation that comes with the fallen man. Nothing spectacular to him, he says. And then the Bible says, yet he accessed his secret and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. What a man. So the power of that result was not necessarily the man. But an understanding he had he approached prayer in a way that produced a global result this is what the bible is saying not just a state result not just a regional result that one man from one point accessed a secret in prayer and he engaged that secret and the whole earth was affected by the quality of his understanding about prayer next verse 
the bible says he prayed again please say after me again again means mastery again means you are not trying to learn the principles you have held it anything you cannot reproduce again and again you have not gained mastery and you see the idea of god in building the saints is to bring us to a point where we gain mastery over the things of the kingdom it was paul who was speaking to his son in the gospel timothy he says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully it is not god's desire for us to continue to shadow box over spiritual principles in hope that one will work god wants us to gain thorough understanding and by the way may i tell you sincerely from the word of god that you can gain mastery in handling the truths of the kingdom with the mastery of a chef with the mastery of a consultant with the mastery of an architect you can hold on to these truths of the kingdom and they can become predictable in your life he prayed again meaning he was not in confusion as to what he did the first time he prayed again and the bible says and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit back to our context the fervent and effectual prayer of a righteous man availed much as seen in the life of elijah who prayed and the heavens were shut over a territory and he prayed again and the heavens were open praise the name of the lord in luke chapter 11 we looked at that a few minutes ago from verse 1 and it is to verse 10 i may not have the time to talk in details but now verse 1 this this is uh, the disciples were asking jesus to teach them to pray then he began his discourse on the subject of prayer we may not touch this but let me just read we're reading verse 2 we'll end at 10 verse 2 he said unto them when ye pray say now I, I may just maybe make a comment or two as we pass but uh, my, my focus is really verse 9 and 10 he says when you pray this should be your understanding um it was not just about reciting this like a chant there was an understanding behind it he says when you approach god you must approach him as father the word father is from the word abba it means your source your sustainer your protector your defender you do not approach god as though they were an alternative he's saying this must be your construct as you approach him in prayer for as long as you have an alternative you cannot secure god's participation his jealousy will not allow you to put him alongside any other thing our father number two he said which art in heaven that means it will require faith in prayer because he's in a realm that is not physical are you getting the idea now he's telling you that this father you are dealing with he resides in a realm and a dimension that will require an agency to connect with him this is where faith comes in number three he said hallowed be your name that means approach him with the spirit of reference do not allow the confidence you have based on the access he is given in christ to sponsor this honor he is still god even though he's your father so you approach him with the spirit of reverence hallowed be your name then next sentence is thy kingdom come it means in order of priority the context of your prayer should be that his governing authority be superimposed in your life and your territory do you know why because most of what you will be asking else are symptoms of a principal deficiency that his kingdom has not yet come that's why you even have to pray for daily bread that in order of priority if his kingdom meaning his culture his life his atmosphere the kingdom of God represents any sphere where his values are respected that if his values are respected within that sphere there are many other prayers you would not need to pray again many other prayer points are they are they are subsets of a principal deficiency so in as much as he's benevolent enough to respond to those smaller requests his ultimate desire is that his kingdom would come and he tells you how his kingdom comes by his will being done that everywhere the will of the father is allowed to find expression his kingdom comes so to ask his kingdom to come means to allow to permit his will to be done 
what is his will his will represents his intent for you and the bible is already clear that god is a good god he does not think evil of us i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 and verse 11 thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end by that understanding it sponsors our confidence in asking for his will because our interest is captured in his will when we are afraid to ask for the will of god is proof we don't trust him are we learning that your will be done in earth notice he never said let it be done on earth he says in earth that first earth being you the earthen vessel so the will of God be done in this earth and then my territory not just earth like the territory you the earth the earthen vessel verse 3 it says give us this day our daily bread this is a revelation of the character of God that in his benevolence he's so meticulous he pays attention to you per day give us this day he knows that supplies must be consistent give us this day our daily bread do you know what this means i wish i had the time daily bread does not just mean food bread means every provision that makes for your survival so daily bread can mean the connections that will keep you moving it does not always mean food bread has the character of keeping you alive so in this prayer you are saying lord you have given me a blank day and you are the only one who knows what it takes for this day to be fruitful so give me my daily bread means coordinate to be within my reach all that it will take for my efficiency this is prayer now next verse forgive us our sins and he leaves you with an understanding for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us do you know what this means it means that for as long as you are alive on a daily basis there will always be someone hurting you and it says that while you obtain forgiveness let the forgiveness of christ towards you always be a reminder that like he has done so for you you must leave a space in your heart to reach out to people next verse are we still together media verse 6 okay no verse 5 now he said unto them which of you shall have a friend now you see the character of scripture again he's taught something on prayer but he now wants to personify that idea in a story the story is my is my point of emphasis <clears throat> he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go to him by midnight and say to him friend lend me three loaves verse 6 for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and i have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee understand the context someone outside is about to be embarrassed shame and reproach seems imminent on someone who is outside and he's beckoning on help you can see that it takes humility to pray because prayer demands that you come into a point where you know that unassisted you cannot help yourself the highest demonstration of humility is prayer that every time you pray it stems from an understanding that i am unable to help myself unassisted this is the story here and so he said look i i need supplies but that supplies is not within my reach it is with you and the man within says do not disturb me by reason of timing i am asleep wait and he's showing you what prayer can do he from within shall say trouble me not for the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee eight i say unto you jesus is speaking though he will not rise and give him a bomb, because of his importunity the word importunity means persistence he's taking power and determination yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him how much 
as many the man was only asking for three loaf but he said the energy that comes from what he's doing can move beyond three loaves to as many as he needs this is prayer are we learning he will give him as many as he needed so prayer is very powerful it is able to produce results verse 9 let's read to 10 and i say unto you ask and it shall be given to you amplified says ask and keep asking and it shall be given to you seek and you shall find it says knock and it shall be open unto you here is the spiritual law that governs prayer verse 10 for everyone please say everyone the advantage of prayer is not for preachers the advantage of prayer is not for a particular race there are regions that have certain things that may seem to be an advantage for them but that prayer can set everyone on common ground to receive it says for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open that means if you do not receive it is because you didn't ask you may say i verbalize my intention asking is more than verbalizing your intention now i want to just share with you maybe in the next five or ten minutes the rules of engagement in prayer you will be seeing here the reason why many believers do not receive answers in prayer Let's go to the book of James. James chapter 4. Apostle James began to give us an understanding as to the dynamics of prayer. That as simple as prayer looks, asking and receiving. By the way, maybe I should say this. Prayer is very powerful. But we have to understand that prayer has jurisdictions. Prayer does not do everything prayer must be involved in everything but prayer does not do everything prayer like all the other keys in the kingdom has defined allocations to what they are able to bring to the life of the believer please understand what i'm saying prayer has to be involved in everything why because the bible says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication it says to make your request known unto God but prayer is not the key to everything Jesus was speaking and he said I will give you the keys this beautiful facility here this auditorium I look around and I see a number of rooms you can have the key to the main door main door is not the only door main door is a major door but it is not the only door as small as the door to the restroom is if you do not have the key there your the key you have to the main door can leave you frustrated when you need to ease yourself are we together now so the understanding that prayer is the only key a believer needs is not accurate prayer must be involved i would always say it this way where prayer is not the key it becomes the hand that holds the key in any case you will still need prayer but that in addition to prayer, there are other spiritual dynamics. So when we say a believer is robust and matured in the things of God, it means you have been able to bring together within your reach the keys of the kingdom. These are the keys that grant you access to command dominion in experience. Dominion is not an impartation. It's the resultant effect of your comprehending the truths of the kingdom, having the keys of the kingdom. So for instance, the prayer ministry according to scripture only achieves the, the platform. Prayer is a platform to achieve just four things. You would be surprised. I may not have the time, but let me mention it since I've spoken about it. According to the authority of scripture, prayer is a platform that grants you access to achieve four things principally. Number one, the first assignment of prayer and the major assignment of prayer is as a tool and a platform for transformation Luke chapter 9 and verse 29 when you read the Bible says when you read 28 and 29 he took Peter James and John the Bible says he went to pray and then verse 29 as he prayed the Bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening 
so prayer the primary and principal assignment of prayer is to provide the platform that makes for transformation evolving into a superior spiritual version of yourself the assignment of prayer more than just petitions prayer really affects you not just things that means you can pray yourself to a higher stronger more dexterous version of yourself number two the second assignment of prayer is as a platform to make requests and obtain promises that every time you need to make requests and obtain promises the authorized platform to make that happen is prayer mark chapter 11 and verse 24 jesus was teaching on faith and he veered to help them understand the subject of prayer he said therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when not if when ye pray he says believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hallelujah we read um philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7 to be anxious for nothing the word careful there is the word anxious but in everything by prayer and supplication garnished with thanksgiving that you let your request be made known unto god don't assume he knows let your request be made known unto god verse 7 says the god of peace the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will garrison your heart and your mind through christ jesus the third assignment of prayer in the life of the believer as revealed through scripture is as a tool for spiritual legislation. That means we are able to make decrees and create possibilities in our lives through the platform of prayer. Job chapter 22 and verse 28. Here's what the Bible says. It says Job 22 and verse 28. Thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee who is the thee the one who made the decree so prayer is not only talking to god prayer is a tool for creation you can create possibilities in your life the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so let the favored of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so not just think so say so are we blessed very important numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 still on the third point the assignment of prayer i thought to quickly chip that in numbers chapter oh dear i'm not sure i got that please just leave that number four welfare and intercession the fourth assignment of prayer is as a tool for warfare and intercession now, I can spend the whole night teaching on this, believe me. John 10, 10, the thief cometh not. That means you never see the thief around anywhere except there is something to kill, there is something to steal, and there is something to destroy. Do you know what this tells you? It means Satan himself is a verification system that you are valuable. That every time you want to verify whether you are valuable, you check and see whether Satan leaves you untouched. If Satan has a particular interest in you, it's a confirmation that there is something he has seen in your life, even if you do not know. The thief cometh not means he is busy, determined, looking for specific people and things. And if you happen to be one of such people, it's already an information to you. You do not see an armed robber struggling to enter a hut. The labor versus the reward is not commensurate. But when an armed robber is struggling to cut a security barricade, he knows that what he will receive will be a worthy reward for that labor. So, could it be why the devil seems to be determined about you? There is something that is so valuable. He would rather face you than a thousand other people. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy the trinity of his operations. You can verify that Satan has visited a place by looking for these signs. If you do not see killing, stealing, and destruction, it was not Satan. It's his signature. He says, but I am come that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly. Are we still together? First John chapter 5 and verse 19. First John 5, 19. 
apostle john is teaching us something he's giving us an information and he says and we know that we are of god and the whole world not just Ibom, not just nigeria when it has to do with wickedness, the reach extends to the entire globe. That means there is no physical space you will go that sustains immunity in itself against wickedness. There must be a system of advantage you build to superimpose this reality. He says the whole world lies in wickedness. One last scripture. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Just buttressing on the fact that prayer is a platform that allows for warfare and intercession. This is a dimension that many believers do not understand or understand properly. It says to be sober, be vigilant. Be vigilant means be discerning. This is a security expression. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour chances are excellent that he will find you because the bible says he's moving around and seeking whom he may devour so transformation number one number two obtaining requests and promises number three creating possibilities in your life number four warfare and intercession this is the jurisdiction of the prayer ministry in the life of the believer now very quickly Let's go to the rules of engagement. James chapter 4, I said earlier, we'll start from verse 1. Apostle James is teaching us how to receive answers to prayer now. James 4, we'll start from verse 1. Verse 1. Can you help us, media? Verse 1. James 4 and 1. Let me turn to it quickly for sake of time. James chapter four and verse one here's what it says from whence cometh wars and fightings among you come they not hence even from your lusts that war within your members next verse ye lost and have not ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war yet ye have not because he acts not very interesting rendition do you know what james is saying he's saying many fights are unnecessary if you understand that prayer can give equal platform for reception he's saying that most of the jealousy and the envy that we experience in our world is a report card from the secret frustration of people who have tried to receive things and have not found are you getting what he's teaching us here from whence come these unnecessary things He's saying the simple reason why you do not have is not because your neighbor has. Your neighbor's having has nothing to do with your not having. It is just a human thing that if I have and you do not have, chances are excellent you will believe it is my having that is stopping your not having. And James is saying that is unnecessary. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, simply because you ask not. Now, verse 3 it says some of you have gone further to ask and shockingly you did not receive he's diagnosing the condition and he's revealing that there is a certain condition where you can ask and yet not receive he says ye ask and receive not why because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust so apostle james here is helping and strengthening our prayer that just because you are asking does not guarantee that you will receive there are rules of engagement there are principles that if not kept you can be sure you will not have it he says the possibility exists that a believer even though well intentioned can ask amiss now what does it mean to ask amiss to ask amiss has three expressions one of it is this written here that you may consume it upon your lusts that means wrong motive the first expression of asking amiss is that your desire for wanting it is already corrupt when a believer asks amiss it means that you desire it for your own lust but let's go to james 
very quickly for further explanation james chapter 1 and we'll go to verse 5 asking amiss this is what we are discussing now so the bible identifies asking amiss as the major secret for not receiving in prayer that asking amiss has an expression of number one asking for the wrong motive the wrong motive number two if any of you lack don't worry about what you lack if any of you lack it could be wisdom in this context or any other thing else that if any, the moment you find out that there is deficiency or insufficiency of any provision in your life it says let him ask of God and that God is a giver are we together now that the moment you see that there is lack in your life lack of favor lack of opportunities lack of open doors in this case lack of wisdom he says to ask of god that give it to how many men and how far does he give liberally are we together and upbraided not and it shall be given to him quickly he brings a disclaimer verse 6 he says but let him ask in faith so here we find one of the keys again that expresses praying amiss that when there is no faith to your prayer it is praying amiss there is no guarantee for an answer is god helping us this night so number one praying amiss refers to praying for the wrong motive number two that there is no faith in that prayer equation and then the bible says let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavered is like the wave of the sea Toast with the wind and toast. Verse 7, very tragic statement. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Praying amiss means number one, let me structure it for you now. Praying without a scriptural backing. Number two, praying with and for the wrong motive. Number three, praying without faith this is very powerful praying amiss do you know if you do not pray with the backing of scripture the bible guarantees that you do not have an answer why because you see the word of god is the basis for god's commitment to the believer as mighty as god is he cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision that the word allows are we together now yes this is very powerful god is almighty yet he has bound himself with principles as far as his relationship with the believer is concerned in isaiah 41 and verse 21 we're about to pray now isaiah 41 and verse 21 isaiah 41 no, never forget this scripture if you are seeing it for the first time or for some of you this is a reminder it says produce your course saith the lord bring forth your strong reasons why should i lift you why should i give you longevity why should i honor you like daniel why should i lift you like joseph he says produce your cause don't just ask me to do it i am committed there has to be a basis for it are we together the word of god is the basis of our confidence the basis of our faith in first first john chapter 5 first john 5 14 and 15 please first john 5 the bible says this is the confidence that we have please say i have this confidence this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything and it is in accordance to his will what is his will his word you see that now his will if it is in accordance with his word he gives us a guarantee that he heareth us verse 15 and we know if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask we know that we have our petitions so we can begin to rejoice even before it manifests why the same way a doctor will give a patient injection and not ask the patient to stay in the hospital there until he's fine you can say go you are fine with that confidence you know why 
he spent years in college learning the dynamics of what he put inside that patient he is aware of what will happen to the patient so when we pray we can know when we say god bless aquaibo open doors of favor we can say amen and begin to rejoice with confidence because we have found in his word can i tell you as loving as god is if there is no scriptural basis for your discussion with him there is no guarantee for answer it's as simple and as honest as that are we blessed psalm 138 and verse 2 very interesting scripture as we prepare to pray psalm 138 and verse 2 it says i will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth let's read the remaining sentence ready read for thou hast magnified thy word above your name his name means his office that he has lifted his word that means if my office compromises the word do not regard my office that's how far god has gone with his word so when you say lord lift me he says i desire to but what is the basis for your lifting then you go to scripture and says your word says deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 that it shall come to pass if i diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that you have commanded me this day that i shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and that all these blessings shall come upon me and overtake me now you have brought a scriptural basis that becomes the platform for your lifting for instance the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day that can become the, the basis for committing god to your rising this is where the mistake of prayer in africa and even this our dear nation we pray a lot of superstitious emotionally consoling prayers that do not have a scriptural basis for answer God will you keep watching me like this are you not the one exalted that is a very emotionally comforting prayer but based on the rules of engagement there is a guarantee that the best you will only receive from that prayer is an emotional consolation that you have expressed yourself to a deity that you believe is higher than you but as far as answer is concerned the Bible assures you already to not be surprised if it does not come Have we learned something tonight? Jesus was done fasting and praying. Please look up. Jesus was done fasting and praying for 40 days according to Matthew chapter 4. And the Bible says Satan came to him immediately. Three temptations. Temptation number one. He says if you are truly the son of God turn this stone to bread you would think jesus would say i've been praying leave me no satan seemed to not even respect his prayer and fasting what gave credence to his prayer was his honor for the word it is written not i am saying it is written the basis for the victory is not what i am saying it is that it is written man shall not live by bread alone jesus the word had to use it is written as a system of defense satan took him to a holy mountain a holy temple and he said fall down after all the bible says he will put his angels charge over you you see how satan switched to and jesus said it is written finally he took him into an exceeding high mountain the bible says showed him the glories of the world and said bow to me and i will give you because all this has been given to me it is written so your prayer is only powerful to the degree to which the content of that prayer is consistent with what is written when what is written becomes what you are speaking then you are praying let me say it again when what is written becomes what you are speaking then you are praying but if you are just speaking i'm speaking my mind oh god you of course he's merciful many answers happen at the platform of mercy because if god is to answer us based on what we are saying the truth is that many people may not receive they may receive one answer per decade or one answer per year 
so we're about to pray for his excellency and our excellency we're about to pray for the prophetic destiny of Aquaibo. my question is have you found in scripture where god have, has vowed to defend you have you found in scripture where God has vowed that this government will continue to rise? Have you found in scripture where he has pledged his commitment that if a people seek him corporately, he will defend them? Just knowing it is there does not bring results. You must find it and you must engage him. When you engage scripture, now you have come within the jurisdiction, the boundary of answered prayer. Are we blessed unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come we have confidence when we pray because we know that we are not praying amiss our motive remains to see Jesus glorified I can tell you this when I stepped in here and I sat down I was just thinking I said my God it takes a heart for God to do this you know sometimes it's easy to see leaders do spectacular things and think they are just doing it it is very difficult to be vocal about certain things in certain positions and i really wish other states that were professing states had these kinds of thing it is not vain to seek god go and read your bible and see there are the blessing of this that you are doing may not necessarily come on many people now in its weightiness it is the third and fourth generation god because god you see is a covenant keeping god you will find out that years after that when the devil wants to come and destroy the state you will find out that a particular government has lifted a prayer garrison to cover the destiny of that state most times you see when you are involved in prophetic intercession you must look beyond your personal comfort at the moment it is a sacrifice you are making for other people hallelujah so we are going to pray i believe in the power of prayer i have come thus far in my life and the beats that god has done in and through my life on account of prayer i did not come from a background that provides any significant advantage by default i know what prayer can do you can evolve into superior versions of yourself in and through prayer and so i know that we have prayed the man of god who came so powerfully led us you see the character when he was leading through the prayer the scriptures that were as simple as this is your first assignment in wanting to pray is to put together the scriptural arsenals that become the basis of your engaging the almighty I'm tired of my child behaving this way. I want him to improve. Oh God, do something. That's not prayer. Your first assignment is to be like a spiritual archaeologist. Go to scripture and find where has God committed himself to lift and to bless you. Then you go to Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. Now you go to God in prayer. Lord, I delight myself in your word and I fear you by the grace you have invested in me. My seed should not be small. That becomes the basis of your defense. Are you seeing that now? He says the generation of the upright shall be blessed then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever that becomes the basis if you are accessing the word of God and it looks like you are going down you have a right to go to God and petition him in prayer you see that now in Job chapter 29 remember what Job said oh that I was in the days of my youth when his light was upon me it is impossible for his light to be upon you and then darkness surrounds you everywhere. There are two kinds of light. The one that shines on your head and the one that shines on your feet. The one that shines on your head gives you illumination and intelligence. The one that shines on your feet gives you direction. You need both. He says, on account of that, the young men saw me and stood. The elders, he began to express the kind of results that came from that light. Any believer including the dear people seated here headed by his excellency can become a uniquely distinguished people on the strength of the truths that we know it is my desire to see the glory of the lord 
rise even within this city and even within this state you have vocally expressed your love for Jesus and I can tell you give him a chance to prove once and again what he can do with the people who love him and honor him greatly from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed ah, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed we can change things in prayer we can create the spiritual climate in prayer we can fight crime in prayer thank God for the judiciary thank God for the police and the military but my Bible says except the Lord builds a house it says they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over a city he said the watchmen watch it but in vain that it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but that he can give his beloved sleep sleep means rest are you ready to pray thank the Lord for his word that's the first prayer point even this night please lift your voice and let's pray thanking him for the abundance of his word the Bible declares that the entrance of his word gives light and even understanding to the simple someone is saying thank you to Jesus for opening your eyes to see and to understand Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it has been alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds thank you father for your word you have brought your word to teach me what it means to pray the kind of prayer that prevails the fervent effectual prayer of the Aquaibom citizen the fervent and effectual prayer of the Aquaibom state government can prevail and can produce power dynamic in its working In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I'll just lead us through three prayer points if you allow me and then we'll be done. The first prayer point has to do with our personal lives and our personal results. I believe that territorial transformation starts from personal transformation. If you do not experience growth and advancement and increase, chances are excellent that you will not have the strength to see to it that your territory becomes that heaven is that true God desires for us to do well and to prosper he says I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth so we are going to pray for ourselves as individuals and to pray as the entire team of the government that God himself would visit individuals and cause that individuals excel the state can excel corporately and yet individuals may not be doing well it is God's desire that we do well distinctly and then it spills over to the state is someone ready to pray I'd like you to lift your voice and begin to ask the Lord to lift you ask the Lord to bless you ask the Lord to honor you the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter is someone praying we are praying to the God that answers prayers lift your voice and pray to the God that answers prayers we are praying to the God that answers prayers Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 12, please, and verse 6. First Samuel, very quickly. 
you may want to write this scripture down very powerful first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 and samuel said unto the people of aquibon he said it is the lord that advanced moses and aaron and brought your fathers out of the land of egypt who advances men that means when you see people moving forward and accomplishing strides it says there is an invisible hand that can push men men do not just move forward it takes more than intention and a good heart to advance it says it is the lord that advanced moses it is the lord that advances excellency it is the lord that advanced you you're going to pray and make a declaration lord advance me i release myself and i contend for advancement based on the integrity of your word are you ready to pray go ahead and pray advancement territorially advancement in my health advancement in my finances advancement in every area of my life advancement even by the spirit of the living god i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ i advance by the mighty hand of god hallelujah still on advancement psalm 18 and verse 29 please very quickly we have about five or so minutes psalm 18 and verse 29 he says for by thee i have run through a troop and by my god i have leaped over a wall it is not normal to leap over a wall but not when god is holding you when that invisible hand holds you you can scale any wall is someone ready to pray Lord, I obtain grace to advance. If it means me leaping over a wall, if it means me moving over a troop, I obtain that grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, someone is praying. By thee, I have run to a troop. By my God, I have leaped over a wall. No limitations in my advancement. In the name of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah genesis 24 and verse 1 genesis 24 and verse 1 the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age help me read the remaining part and the lord had blessed him in all things all things naaman the captain of the syrian army had some things but leprosy still remained and the slave girl through the ministry of that slave girl he received perfection someone is about to pray lord you have helped me in this area but this other area by the spirit of grace grant me all round rest is someone praying all things he says that god when he blesses men he blesses them in all things he does not bless your finances and leave your health he does not bless your end your endeavor and leaves your finances if it is god he blesses in all things please lift your voice and pray hallelujah praise the lord now let's pray for aquibo second chronicles 15 and verse 3 second chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3 now for a long season israel had been without the true god and without a teaching priest and without law verse 4 it says but when they in their trouble because trouble will be imminent in any city that does not have these three things. Number one, the recognition of the one true God. Number two, teaching priests, models that help to shape the spiritual and the moral convictions of people within a territory. If a territory is bankrupt of such people, there will be imminent moral decadence. And then number three, laws. These are the three things that keep any society the consciousness of the authority that is above them in heaven number two the presence of teaching priests men and women who help to shape the spiritual and the moral convictions of the people 
the spiritual health of the average individual within any geographic region is a report card as to the quality of the teaching priests within that territory and then number three no law when a people are lawless when a territory is lawless decadence is imminent the bible says but when they in their trouble did turn to the lord god of israel and sought him the bible says he was found of them are you ready to pray father that acquire bob will continue to acknowledge jesus as the head over this state that you will continue to honor the ministry of teaching priests men and women of god spiritual leaders and all of that and that when it has to do with the law and those who enforce the law grant wisdom are we praying please lift your voice and pray over the state that continually jesus will be lifted and glorified over the state continually 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 lifted and glorified over the state lifted and glorified over the state in the name of Jesus first Timothy chapter 2 please from verse 1 and 2 wrapping up now first Timothy chapter 2 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men but particularly for kings and for all that are in authority why that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty we have a responsibility to pray for the leaders led by his excellency and her excellency and i want us to pray we are going to use them as a point of contact and cry that in the name of jesus that god himself will find their excellencies alongside all the members that make the executive cabinet and all who are involved in the affairs of this state we are going to pray that they remain malleable vessels for the purposes of god to find expression within the state are you in agreement lift your voice in one minute and let's pray pray for your governor pray for her excellency pray for the deputy governor pray for all the members of parliament the state house the judiciary let it be from the depth of your heart we are wrapping up you are praying now that they will continue to prosper hallelujah last scripture second chronicles 26 i'll read from verse 3 to 5 second chronicles 26 16 years old was uzziah when he began to reign and he reigned 50 and 2 years in jerusalem his mother's name was jecolia of jerusalem the bible says he did what was right in the sight of the lord according to all that his father amaziah did verse 5 and he sought god in the days of zechariah who had understanding in the visions of god and as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper as long as he sought the lord we're going to pray still for the governor and the entire um, cabinet we're going to pray lord they will seek the lord they will seek you and seek your ways and you will prosper this state while they seek you are you in agreement please lift your voice in one minute and pray hallelujah praise the lord amen please let me just play for a minute the Holy Spirit just put a scripture in my heart that I want us to look at. Proverbs chapter 24, I believe. 24 from verse 3 and 4. And the Lord said, we have to pray this over a choir book. Through wisdom is a house builded. By understanding, it is established. 
by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious things wisdom knowledge understanding in as much as we are spiritual people when it has to do with bringing policies and dealing with the cosmos we need our spirituality to translate into a context of wisdom a context of understanding and knowledge that becomes uh, it becomes evident to the state I am convinced that spirituality must translate into a context that produces a level of intelligence that our territory can relate with are we in agreement on that so final prayer point Lord for this state for the leaders and for everyone who is part of this state your wisdom understanding and knowledge upon them please lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray wisdom knowledge and understanding for those in government for our citizens in this state for men and women of God for politicians the judiciary the police the law enforcement agents we pray for wisdom the ability to translate spiritual truth to a context that can improve and better society in the name of Jesus Christ by the privilege of priesthood and by the privilege of the election of grace I led my voice with every man of God every minister of the gospel here represented and in this state and I join my faith with you to speak over this state that in the name that is above all names let it be a new season for this state in the name of Jesus I pray for his excellency and all the cabinet members I decree and declare supernatural wisdom from the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for all who are part of this state it will only be for you from glory to glory by prophecy we fortify the spiritual borders over a quiet bomb darkness terrorism will never penetrate this system we command the earth to judge the evil doers in the name of Jesus Christ let the decline let there be a a multiplied decline in moral decadence in the name of Jesus Christ let the young men and women in this state continue to be responsible people I decree and declare that a quiet bomb will only go from glory to glory and grace to grace let it be so in the name of Jesus let it be so in the name of Jesus that decades after now a quiet bomb will not look like a shadow of itself it will only be an improvement from glory to glory in Jesus name I pray Thank you once again for the honor to bring the word. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.